Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Khan's podcast, a place where we discuss all historical, cultural, and even political aspects of Turkic history. After delving deep into ancient Turkic culture, as well as the Gok Turk Empire, we want to make a jump forward in the timeline of human civilization and focus our attention on tribes and states that were seemingly outside the Turkic world, but founded or led by Turks, or even both. Today, we want to talk to you about the Mamluk Empire, a sultanate established and ruled by Turkic slaves who first became high officers among the Egyptian Muslim states, and then created their own independent empire that stretched from Upper Egypt to the Levant and even Anatolia. Before we start, here's a friendly reminder that this podcast is part of the Khan's Den social media project. Under the Khan's Den umbrella, we publish both the high-quality documentaries that you've become accustomed to as well as this podcast, that you can listen to on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Amazon Music. Perhaps you are doing that right now. No matter what platform you chose, keep in mind that our work is strictly financed by Emery, who founded Khan's Den, as well as his supporters on Patreon and YouTube. You can become a member on either of these platforms and for a small monthly fee, lend your support so we can keep these projects going. However, if you can't afford it right now, no worries. We are already grateful that you are listening to our voices, watching our videos, and taking part in the lively discussions throughout our social media channels. Thanks to all of you. With that out of the way, let's start with today's topic. So, what is a Mamluk anyway? The origins of the Mamluk Sultanate can be traced back to the Ayyubid dynasty which was founded by the military leader Saladin in the late 12th century. Saladin, whose real name was Salahattin, managed to unite much of the Muslim forces and reclaim the Holy Land from the Crusader states. His dynasty, the Ayyubi, then ruled Egypt, Syria, and other parts of the Middle East. To consolidate their power, they established a system of military slavery. In this system, young, non-Muslim boys, mostly of Turkic and later Circadian origin, were captured or purchased as slaves, converted to Islam, and then rigorously trained as soldiers and administrators. These slave soldiers, known as Mamluks, became the backbone of the Ayyubid military forces. The term is derived from Arabic and means owned or possessed. Think of the Dave Shirme system in the Ottoman Empire a few centuries later. The elite infantry unit of the Ottomans the Janissaries, were also men recruited at a young age and taken from non-Turkish, non-Muslim families. In adulthood, a Janissary became the elite infantry unit at the Sultan's disposal. Yet Janissaries were not recruited en masse. The Mamluks, on the other hand, had a long history of migration before they finally arrived in Egypt. The Kipchak Turkic background of many Mamluks can be traced to the vast Eurasian steppes, where numerous Turkic tribes, including the Kipchaks, lived as nomadic pastoralists. The Kipchaks were part of the larger Cuman Kipchak Confederation that dominated the Pontic Caspian steppe region in the 11th to 13th centuries. They were known for their horsemanship and archery skills, which made them valuable military assets to the Islamic empires, which used them as slave soldiers. Following the Mongol invasions in the 13th century, the Kipchak tribes were expelled from their homelands, and many Kipchak warriors were captured or sought refuge in Muslim lands. Islamic rulers, such as the Ayyubids in Egypt and the Turkish Seljuks in Anatolia, took advantage of this opportunity by integrating these skilled Kipchak warriors into their existing Mamluk systems. The Kipchak Mamluks were highly valued for their martial prowess, discipline, and loyalty. Kipchaks and other Turkic peoples such as the Pechenegs and Oghuz also became the focus of European rulers. After battles in Eastern Europe or the Middle East, they sometimes captured prisoners of war. If they found Turks among them, they'd take them home and integrate them into their respective armies. The Europeans coined the term Turkopol, which is derived from an ancient Greek term meaning son of a Turk. But more on that in another episode. A number of enslaved Kipchaks were sold to various people in the Middle East, but especially to the ruling elite in Egypt. There, the Kipchak Turks underwent a process of acculturation, adopting Islamic customs, values, and practices. Many of them rose through the ranks of the military and administration, eventually occupying positions of power and prestige. 
The Kipchak Mamluks were instrumental in the formation of the Mamluk Sultanate in Egypt, and several of its sultans, such as Sultan Baybars and Sultan Kalawun, were of Kipchak origin. However, the Kipchaks, or Turkic Mamluks, rose to power during a time of great turmoil. The crusades of the Christian European states against the Muslim states of the Near East and Anatolia had reached their climax with the victory of the aforementioned Saladin against the Crusaders at the Battle of Hattin in 1187, where the Ayyubi forces defeated a combined army of eight Crusader states and Christian religious orders. Saladin's military campaigns in the first decade of his reign aimed at uniting the various Arab and Muslim states in the region against the Crusaders, established the general boundaries and sphere of influence of the Sultanate of Egypt for the nearly three and a half centuries of its existence. While his successors managed to expand their empire into Yemen in the south and even parts of Anatolia in the north, the Crusaders still succeeded in recapturing some parts of the Levant. The Ayyubid Sultanate began to decline in the early 13th century due to internal power struggles and fragmentation that weakened central authority. However, it was the Mamluks who were instrumental in the expansion and power of the Ayyubids. Known for their exceptional horsemanship, archery, and combat skills, they were responsible for defending the Ayyubid territories and played a crucial role in the battles against the Crusaders. Their military successes led to increased status and influence within the Ayyubid administration. These Turks formed strategic alliances with various factions within the Ayyubid state. They supported various Ayyubid rulers and viziers, which allowed them to navigate the complex political landscape and gradually gain more power. The most influential of all the Mamluks was Iz ad-Din Abak al-Turkomani, known simply as Abak. He founded the Mamluk Sultanate during a time of great political turmoil in Egypt and beyond. The time of the Kipchaks in the Middle East had finally come. Ibak was born in the lands of the Kipchak Confederation. Like many other Mamluks, he was captured as a young boy and sold into slavery. Ibak was eventually taken to Egypt, where he was purchased by the Ayyubid ruler, al Sali Ayyub. There he received extensive military training, excelling in horsemanship, archery, and various other combat skills. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Mamluk Corps due to his abilities and loyalty. His name is derived from the Turkish words I and Bek, meaning moon and leader, respectively. Remember the title Beg that was mentioned several times in previous episodes of our podcast, as well as in the Khan's Den documentaries on YouTube? The title was indeed very popular and relevant over many centuries, from the Gokturks well into the times of the Ottoman Empire. In any case, during the Seventh Crusade, which raged from 1248 to 1254, Aybak demonstrated his prowess as a military commander. Under the leadership of al Sali Ayyub, the Mamluks successfully defended Egypt against the Crusaders led by King Louis of France. The Mamluks captured the French king and secured a substantial ransom for his release, which increased their prestige and influence in Egypt. This was to Aybak's credit. When al Sali Ayyub died in 1249, the Ayyubid Sultanate entered a period of instability, marked by internal power struggles and a lack of strong central authority. Ibak took advantage of the situation to consolidate his power. After the death of al Sali Ayyub's son Turan Shah, who was killed by fellow Mamluks, Ibak was installed as the new ruler of Egypt in 1250. He married al Sali Ayyub's widow, a woman named Shajar al-Dur, a powerful figure in her own right to legitimize his rule. Initially, however, Shajar was actually made queen of the Sultanate after a meeting of Turkish Mamluks and Arab emirs. News of the murder of the inauguration of Shajar reached Syria. The Syrian emirs were asked to pay homage to Shajar al-Dur but refused, and the former Sultan's deputy in Syria rebelled against Cairo. The Syrian emirs in Damascus gave the city to Anasir Yusuf, the Ayyubid emir of Aleppo, and the Mamluks in Cairo responded by arresting the emirs who were loyal to the Ayyubids in Egypt. In addition, the Abbasid Caliph in Baghdad also refused to recognize Shajar as a monarch. This was a great setback to the Mamluks in Egypt, 
as the custom during the Ayyubid era was that the sultan could gain legitimacy only through the recognition of the Abbasid caliph. The Mamluks, therefore, decided to install Ibak as a new sultan. First, he married Shajar al-Dur. Then, she abdicated and passed the throne to him. Though the period of Shajar al-Dur's rule as a monarch was only for three months, it witnessed two important events in history. One, the expelling of Louis IX from Egypt, which marked the end of the Crusaders' ambition to conquer the southern Mediterranean basin, and two, the death of the Ayyubid dynasty and the birth of the Mamluk state, which dominated the southern Mediterranean for decades. But even then, the conflict for rule over Egypt was not over. Meanwhile, the caliph in Baghdad was actually preoccupied with the Mongols, who were raiding areas not far from his capital. He therefore preferred to settle the mamluk Ayyubi conflict peacefully. Through the caliph's negotiations and mediation, the Mamluks reached an agreement with the Ayyubids that gave them control over southern Palestine, including Gaza and Jerusalem and the Syrian coast. With this agreement, the Mamluks not only added new territories to their dominion, but also gained recognition for their new state. In addition to the conflict with the Ayyubids of Syria, the Mamluks successfully suppressed serious rebellions in Middle and Upper Egypt. Then, fearing the growing power of the Salihiyya Mamluks, who had installed him as sultan along with Shajar al-Dur, Abak had their leader Aktai assassinated. Aktai's assassination was immediately followed by a Mamluk exodus to Syria, where they joined the Ayyubids under Nasser Yusuf. Prominent Mamluks such as Baibars and Kalawun A were among those who fled to Syria. Abak became the sole and absolute ruler of Egypt after the Salihiyya Mamluks, who were the supporters of Shajar al-Dur, left Egypt and turned against him. Ibak's reign was marked by a mixture of military and political challenges. He had to deal with the remnants of the Ayyubid dynasty as well as external threats such as the Crusaders and the Mongols. He focused on strengthening the military, especially the Mamluk Corps, to protect and expand his empire. He also sought alliances with neighboring Muslim states and implemented policies to stabilize the economy and rebuild the infrastructure damaged during the Crusades. During Ibak's reign, Egypt experienced a resurgence in art, architecture, and learning. He commissioned several significant building projects, including mosques, madrasas, and caravanserais, roadside inns for travelers. The construction of these structures provided employment opportunities and contributed to the revitalization of cities such as Cairo and Alexandria. Abak's reign was not without controversy, however. His marriage to Shajar al-Dur was a source of tension, as some Mamluks clearly disapproved of their union. In addition, Abak faced opposition from various factions within the Mamluk hierarchy. Abak's reign came to an abrupt end when he was assassinated by his own Mamluk bodyguards in 1257. The motives for the assassination remain unclear, but some theories suggest that it was instigated by his wife, Shajar al-Dur, possibly due to Abak's attempt to distance himself from her or his plans to marry another woman to strengthen his position. In the wake of Abak's assassination, the Mamluk Sultanate experienced even more political turmoil. Shajar al-Dur briefly seized power, becoming Egypt's first and only female sultan. Her reign was short-lived, however, as she faced opposition from various Mamluk factions. In 1259, Shajar al-Dur was deposed and assassinated by Mamluk supporters of a former ally of Abak, Qutuz. Qutuz, in turn, declared himself sultan and became Abak's successor. The conflict between the Mamluks and the remnants of the Ayyubid dynasty took place during Ibak's reign and continued after his death. As the Mamluks consolidated power in Egypt, they faced opposition from various Ayyubid factions still vying for control. These internal power struggles weakened the Muslim states in the region, making them more vulnerable to external threats such as the Crusaders and the Mongols. Speaking of which, the Mongol Khaganate played a significant role in shaping the geopolitical landscape of the region during this period. Under the leadership of Genghis Khan and his successors, the steppe empire expanded rapidly and posed a major threat to the Muslim world. By the mid-13th century, the Mongols had conquered much of Central Asia, Persia, and parts of the Caucasus, 
bringing them to the doorstep of the Mamluk Sultanate. Mongol forces led by Hulagu Khan had just sacked Baghdad in 1258, destroying the Abbasid Caliphate and sending shockwaves throughout the Muslim world. In response to the Mongol threat, Qutuz formed an unofficial alliance with the Crusader states in the Levant, as well as other rivaling Mamluks, despite any religious or ethnic differences. This alliance aimed to defend their territories against the Mongol advance. Qutuz and his entourage, including a certain fellow Mamluk named Baybars, decided to take military action to prevent the Mongols from invading Egypt next. The Mamluk forces, led by Qutuz and Baybars, marched north from Egypt to confront the Mongols. The Mongol army, commanded by Kitbuka, a Nestorian Christian name in Turk, had been significantly weakened by the withdrawal of much of its forces when Hulagu Khan was forced to return to Mongolia after the death of the great Khan Monkey. The opposing armies met at the Battle of Ain Jalut on September 3, 1260. Near the spring of Ain Jalut, Goliath Spring, in the Jezreel Valley in modern-day Israel, both sides exchanged arrows, followed by a series of small skirmishes and mock retreats. Baibars, a prominent Mamluk commander, played a pivotal role in the battle. He led a vanguard of Mamluk forces and used hit-and-run tactics to lure the Mongols into chasing him. As the Mongols pursued Baibars, the main Mamluk force, under the command of Sultan Kutuz, remained hidden behind a nearby hill. When the pursuing Mongol forces were far enough away from their main body, Kutuz ordered the main Mamluk army to charge, thus triggering the trap. The Mamluks were able to surround and overwhelm the surprised and outnumbered Mongol forces, resulting in a decisive victory for the Mamluks. During the battle, the Mamluk heavy cavalry proved highly effective against the Mongol horse archers. The Battle of Ain Halut was a turning point in the history of the region, marking the first major defeat of the Mongols and halting their westward expansion. This victory saved the Mamluk Sultanate and other Muslim states from potential Mongol conquest. The Mamluk's success increased their reputation as the dominant military force in the region, allowing them to consolidate their rule over Egypt and Syria. The victory also led to the weakening of the Mongol Ilkhanate, which eventually converted to Islam and ceased to be a significant threat to the Muslim world. Moreover, the alliance between the Mamluks and the Crusader states during the battle, while temporary, highlighted the changing geopolitical landscape of the region, where religious differences could be set aside in the face of a common enemy. In the years following Ain Jalut, the Mamluk Sultanate continued to play a decisive role in the region, successfully repelling further Mongol incursions and finally bringing an end to the Crusades with the fall of the last Crusader stronghold, Acre, in 1291. After the Battle of Ain Jalut in 1260, the Mamluk Sultanate consolidated its power in Egypt and Syria, successfully repelling further Mongol incursions and expanding its territories. In the same year, Sultan Qutuz was assassinated during a victory parade by a group of Mamluk commanders led by Baybars, who then declared himself the new Sultan. Baybars' reign from 1260 to 1277 marked a significant period in the history of the Bari dynasty, the new ruling house of Egypt. He was an ambitious and skilled ruler who focused on strengthening the Mamluk military, consolidating the empire, and dealing with external threats. Baibars led numerous successful military campaigns against the Crusader states, capturing key fortresses such as Arsuf, Haifa, and Antioch. In 1271, he successfully defended the city of Aleppo from a Mongol siege. The Bari Mamluks invested in infrastructure projects to strengthen their empire, they built and repaired canals, bridges, and roads, and established an efficient postal system to improve communication between different parts of the realm. The Mamluk economy benefited from these investments, as well as from the control of important trade routes connecting Europe, Africa, and Asia. Despite these accomplishments, the Bari dynasty faced several challenges, including internal strife and power struggles between various Mamluk factions, as we have seen many times. The Mamluk system of governance, which still centered on the military elite, often led to rivalries and competition for power. Additionally, the later Bahri sultans were often perceived as weak and ineffective rulers, which further exacerbated internal conflicts. 
The Bari dynasty came to an end in 1382 when the Burji dynasty took control of the Mamluk Sultanate. The Burji Mamluks, who were predominantly Circassians, ruled until the Ottoman conquest of Egypt in 1517. Nonetheless, the Mamluk Sultanate of the Kipchaks remains one of the most interesting and also powerful empires in Turkic and Egyptian history. It was called State of the Turks by Arab chroniclers. There is no doubt that the Mamluk Empire was a Turkic Empire, which is why we covered it here on the podcast. Certainly, there is a lot more to tell about the Mamluk Empire and its history until the conquest by the Ottomans in the 16th century. But perhaps we'll look at it another time. Thank you for listening to the Khans Podcast. Don't forget to rate us with five stars on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon, and to give a thumbs up on YouTube.